In this video, we are going to find the average rate of change um, for an exponential function on a given interval. So just understand this. Average rate of change is the same thing as the slope. And for that reason, when we calculate the average rate of change, ROC, we will wind up using the slope formula, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So what I like to do is uh, make a little table of values to really help me picture what I'm doing. X's and Y's. When I give you an interval like this from 1 to 2, um, we're talking about left and right. These are X values. So X values are 1 and 2 because of that. Now, we need, the, we need to know the y values that go with these x values. So um, I'll just do those calculations real quick right here. Or you know what, maybe I'll just slide to the right. OK, so if the x value is 1 and I want the y value, I'm just going to plug in 1. So for this y value right here, I'm going to go 5 to the 1 power minus 2. Well, that's just 5 minus 2, so that's just going to be 3. Um, so for this y value right here, x is 2. So that's 5 squ squared minus 2. So that's just 25 minus 2, so that's 23. OK, so those are my x's and y's. So now as I do my rate of change slash aka slope formula, I'm going to do y minus y over x minus x. So y minus y. So that's going to be uh, 23 minus 3, y minus y, over x minus x, 2 minus 1. OK, so that's just going to be 20 over 1, which of course just equals 20. So that is the average rate of change uh, of this exponential function on this interval. So let's do it again. So for number 16, again, I'm going to need that average rate of change. OK, I'm still using this formula, y minus y over x minus x. I'm not going to copy the formula again. Um, once again, I'm going to make a little table of values, though, over here. So I've got my x's and my y's. The x's are 0 and 3. OK, now for the y's, let me slide over a bit. So I'm using this formula. I'm plugging in x, and I'm finding y. So for this y value right here, I'm going to have 3 times 2 to the 0 power. There's my 0. 3 times 2 to the 0 power minus 2. Now anything to the 0 power is 1. So this is really just um, 3 minus 2, which is 1. OK, because uh, 2 to the 0 power is 1. So that just becomes a 1. 3 times 1 is just 3 minus 2. Uh, you get it. I'm moving on. So now here, I'm plugging in 3 for x. So that's going to be 3 times 2 to the third power minus 2. Well, that's going to be 3 times 8, right? 2 to the third power is 8 minus 2. 3 times 8 is 24 minus 2. That's a 4, people. And so that'll be 22. Now, so when we do our rate of change, we're just going to end up using the slope formula. So I'm going to do y minus y over x minus x. y minus y, that's 22 minus 1 over x minus x, 3 minus 0. All right, 22 minus 1 is 21. 3 minus 0 is 3. 21 divided by 3 is 7. So that would be the rate of change right there. 
And finally, for number 17, I just plain gave you a table of values. Okay, this is an exponential function. All right, you can see everything is tripling. All right, times 3 is 9. Uh, I'm sorry, times 1 times 3 is 3, times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, times 3 times 3. So um, this is exponential. Um, anyway, I already gave you the table of values. So it says find the rate of change from day 1 to day 3. So this is day 1 right here. So I'm going to use these values. And this is day 3 right here. So you can no ignore everything else. So um, again, for the rate of change, I'm doing y minus y over x minus x, because it's just slope. So y minus y, that's 9 minus 1 over x minus x, so 3 minus 1. OK, so that's going to be 8 over 2, which is going to be 4. So that is how you calculate the rate of change over a given interval. Um, really, that's how it works for any function, including exponential functions.